Across decades and generation after generation, Wrigley Field has been woven into the fabric of the Chicago Cubs. But for all its ties to the city's National League team, Wrigley Field wasn't originally built to be the Cubs' home field, but instead for a short-lived franchise known as the Chicago Whales. The Whales were a part of the Federal League, a professional league started in 1913. Their owner, Charles A. Wiegman, wanted a place his team could call home, eventually settling on the grounds of an old seminary. Wiegman leased the land and construction began in February 1914. Exactly two months later, Wiegman Park was ready for the Wales home opener. It featured a single-tiered grandstand that seated 14,000, along with limited bleacher seating in the outfield. But a year after it opened, the Federal League folded, and all of a sudden, Wiegman had no team to play in his brand new stadium. At the time, the Chicago Cubs were playing across town at the West Side grounds, and Wiegman saw an opportunity to salvage his investment. He bought the Cubs and moved them to Wiegman Park. The Cubs played their first game at their new home on April 20th, 1916, beating the Cincinnati Reds in 11 innings. A few years later, William Wrigley Jr., a chewing gum magnate, grabbed controlling interest of the Cubs and Wiegman Park would eventually be renamed Wrigley Field. Throughout the 1920s and 30s, Wrigley Field underwent significant renovations, including the addition of an upper deck, the outfield bleachers, and the now famous brick outfield wall covered in ivy. But one thing that has never changed, not since April 20th, 1916, is the team that calls Wrigley home. The Cubs have never left, and in that place they call the friendly confines, deep traditions spanning so many years have made Wrigley Field much more than a place to watch baseball. <laughs>